You! Hello, Treepwood. You sent me on a wild albatross chase for La Esponja Grande and promised me it would cure the pox. But after fending off sexually ambiguous merpeople, a giant manatee, and your crazy ex-boyfriend, what do I get for my trouble? This sorry excuse for a kitchen sponge. La Esponja. Ah, I notice you strategically left out the Grande from this worthless piece of junk. Once it cured my piddly leftover pox, it didn't have enough mojo left to cure Elaine. It's not worthless. It is merely young. It must be brought to maturity in order to reach its voodoo-absorbing potential. Brought to maturity? How am I supposed to do that? Give it a talk about the sponge birds and sponge bees? Like all infants, La Esponja needs nourishment. It must be fed six special voodoo courses to bring it to adult size. What sort of meal is that? A feast for the senses. The menu, Treepwood. Take it and served a sponge a meal unlike any other. And then? It will grow. Hey, neat! There's a map of the Flotsam Jungle on the cover. No more listening to bees and birds and boars for this mighty pirate. Hey, you! Again! Hello, Treepwood. You've been lying to me about the Chuck all these years! My ways are my own, Guybrush, but rest assured I have never lied to you. You're lying right now! All this time, I thought LeChuck was an inhuman monster. Actually, he was an inhuman monster, but only because you made him that way. Did I? Or was I merely playing my role in a much larger play? Stop trying to confuse me. We're tired of being puppets in your chess game. This is no game, Treepwood. You corrupted LeChuck and sent him out to torment me and Elaine for years! I'll never trust you again. I don't require your trust, Treepwood. Only your heroism. I met Coronado de Cava. My beloved. How was he? Mad. Bipolar. Life ruined. Just another pawn sacrificed in your theater of the damned. I never meant to cause him harm. Sure you did. Ah, and admit it. You were manipulating Coronado. Coronado was never touched by my voodoo, even though he sometimes begged to be. Uh, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing anymore, so I'll just shut up. Have you seen Elaine? Of course, even if you have, I won't believe you. So whether I have or have not does not matter. Well, if you do, tell the Chuck and then have him tell me. So, when I was with Dakava, you might have felt something strange happen. Ah, you are no doubt alluding to your brief possession of my physical form. Ha! How did it feel to be the Manipulate Ted instead of the Manipulate Tor for once? It was curiously liberating. You're weird. Yeah, try not to get executed before I cure Elaine. As you wish. Chuck! Guy brush! I would have bet my good hand I'd never say this, but thank you. For what? I've caused you nothing but despair. For taking the fall back there, and for exposing the voodoo lady. I don't know what to make of any of it, but now I can focus on saving Elaine and dealing with the pox. It is the very least I could do. But be careful, Guy brush. I'm always careful. This from the guy who proposed to his wife with the cursed engagement ring you stole from my hold? Is that a dig? Is the evil demon pirate LeChuck developing a sense of humor? This is weird. Where have you been? I thought you were with Elaine. Well, after leaving Spinner K, Elaine and I set out to finish releasing all those monkeys I'd captured. After we were finished releasing the last of them, Elaine caught wind of your trial, went into a poxed rage, seized a passing clam schooner, and made a beeline for Flotsam Island. That's my girl. Needless to say, I took my own vessel and headed after her. But in the middle of the night, my ship was sunk by a rogue wave. I was washed up on an island of cannibals, from whom I deftly escaped using many of the self-same skills you taught me back on the Jerkbait Islands. You know, it's amazing how easily man-eating tribes can be reasonable. Knowing I needed to get here more than ever, 
I lashed together a few bits of cannibal leftovers and warthog sinew to build a makeshift raft. Unfortunately, that was soon eaten by the sharks. Oh no! So I swam. I swam as fast as I could for three days. And arrived just in time to save me from the gallows. Nicely done, buddy. I can't believe the voodoo lady has been pulling your ghostly slash demonic strings all these years. It came as a shock to me as well. But her diary spells it all out. You, me, Elaine, we're all part of the voodoo lady's malevolent plans. Malevolence is in the eye of the beholder, Guybrush Treepwood. I know this is difficult to understand, but things are not as they seem. No, things seem remarkably convoluted, which is what I've come to expect from you. I've always had your best interests at heart. Well, what about my interests? Without your meddling, I could have lived a normal, happy pirate's life. Ha! The destiny of LeChuck has never been normal. I risked life, limb, and manatee to get La Esponja Grande, and it's a puny, worthless lump. What? Soak up the gargantuan wonder that is La Esponja Grande. That is La Esponja Grande? But wasn't it supposed to hold infinite amounts of voodoo? I know. What a crock. The size of the sponge is meaningless. It is what you do with it that matters. Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, well, you, you fight, fight like, like a... a uh... <laughs> <laughs> Kudos to your swim instructor. I was fueled by the fire of our budding friendship. So, Miss Spooky Pants gave me this menu which will supposedly put more grande in my esponja. Excellent! You wanna put some of your newfound deductive reasoning to the test and help me figure out what I need for the menu? I'd give my beard to be able to help you, but I'm afraid my pirate mind is not fit for such things. It explains why after all these years, you still allowed me to get within a nautical mile of you with a bottle of voodoo root beer. Sit tight, buddy. Once I save Elaine, you're next. Don't worry about me. No hard feelings over all those various civil and criminal charges? Water under the bridge. Great. A bridge with a fast-talking shyster-slash-salesman dangling from it. Mm -hmm. What kind of souvenirs could you possibly be making out of the Voodoo Lady and LeChuck? Oh, ye of little faith! Feast your eyes on the all-new People vs. LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady collection! What's this? It's a little decorative pin I've whipped up. Trial of the Century 2. Electric Voodoo. We're still working on a tile. Well, what's that one? That's our cursed cutlass of Kaflu LeChuck doll. Press the button for its special transforming glow. What's happening? Uh, it's a little bright. Yeah, we're still working out a few kinks. What's that? It's my entrancing Voodoo Lady dashboard good luck charm. Ugh, disturbing. Mm, on second thought, say no more. I don't suppose you'd be willing to sell me your eye-bending jacket? Give up my jacket? It'd be like Samson getting a buzz cut, or King Arthur losing Excalibur, or Bluebeard dying himself blonde. Huh? Without my jacket, my salesman Mojo would wither away faster than a hothouse orchid in a pizza oven. So, that's a maybe? Sure you don't want to sell me your people-defying jacket? It's for a good cause. This jacket stays with Stan until it literally falls off my back, Threepwood. 
have you seen my wife? Have I? That crazy sea devil hit me up for one of my patented and perfectly passable porcelain power pirate treasure maps before hightailing it for the jungle. If we're lucky, that thing will keep her going around in circles for weeks. Something sure shoved a short sword up his aft sail. trouble. Found Jacques. He told me. What? He told me. What? What did the monkey tell you? Lepidoptera flotsamus accelerus. Like many of its more common cousins, the sharp-toothed flotsam island moth has a penchant for noshing on articles of clothing. Where flotsamus accelerus differs is in the pain of its bites, which can be quite annoying, and the rapidity of its meals. A swarm of flotsam moths can strip a man down to his undergarments in mere seconds, assuming the notoriously finicky moths approve of his wardrobe, of course. This must have been broken in the fight between Morgan and DeSinge. I hope the vole escaped. It's broken. <gasps> Darn. No more bananas. Curse you, banana god! I could try to mix up those chemicals, but I'd probably just end up exploding. And not in the funny way. Singe will pay for this. It's locked. It looks like the singe is using my hand to make something called the Jeu de Vie. where the Marquis keeps all the severed limbs of the pirates he's operated on. Hmm. Hey, you never know when a sack of severed legs is going to come in handy. Or footy, as the case may be. Sorry.
name of Bluebeard's hair dye? Hey, hey, no poaching. I have called dips. I think I may be lost. Shouldn't there be a creepy voodoo shack right about there? There was, until they came to arrest that pox-spreading voodoo lady. What happened? First came the flames. Poor Senor Nipperkin went up like St. Elmo's fire. Then she emerged from the conflagration, mumbling ancient curses with every regal step. I never forget the baleful stare she fixed me with as she was left. Well, a look compelling me to a lifetime of suffering, shame, and regret. Okay. And if that wasn't bad enough, I, I haven't found one bit of cool voodoo stuff in the wreckage. Come on! Mob justice can be so unfair. Looks like the light of the shack's embers has attracted a swarm of jungle moths. That probably explains what happened to the voodoo lady's rug. Whoa! Uh-oh. Looks like these finicky moths won't eat a jacket that's encrusted with bacon grease, fish water, and manatee guts. Lucky me. Doesn't need to be illuminated. All right, little fellas, check out these high def duds. Well, that's just great. The lamp's dead. Well, at least Stan's sign is keeping the moths from returning to the jungle. Stan! Skybrush, old pal! Can I take another look at your voodoo lady and the Chuck Goo Gaws? Can't keep your eyes off them, huh? Well, what's that one? That's our cursed cutlass of Kaflu, the Chuck doll. Press the button for its special transforming glow. Uh, it's a little bright. Yeah, we're still working out a few kinks. Hey, now, what's this? A fuzzy flying fan club? Ah! Hey, knock it off, you nutty nibblers! That, ah! That hurts! Sweet, ah! Fancy! Ah! Moses! Ah! Ow! Ah! Ow! 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 Ouch! That was one heck of an experience, eh, Threepwood? It's a good thing old Stan always keeps a few spare jackets in the back office, or I'd be defending my clients in the all together. Say, that's not a bad idea. Stan S. Stan Man, naked attorney at law. You've got nothing to hide, and neither does he. Um... No time to chat, Threepwood. I've got business cards to print. Sweet. 